G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we are continuing our series of looking at each team in the league's best 22 three years from now, kind of projecting uh, you know, how good they're going to be, what kind of players they're likely to still have on the list, who is retired by now, and uh, we've worked all the way back from the Western Bulldogs in reverse alphabetical order to right now where we're going to be talking about the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, this series has been a lot of fun so far. You guys probably don't know this because I uh, scheduled videos to release while I was away, but I just spent the entire weekend in London and I am knackered. I'm going to have to dig deep for this. I haven't thought about football in three days, and that's the longest I've gone in a row without thinking about football for months. So bear with me. Uh, we're going to have a crack at the Gold Coast Suns. They're an interesting one because I feel like three years looking at this team, uh, that feels like that's when they're going to fully mature. And I don't know. I don't want to speak too soon. We'll go through it together. But this could be when they arrive, so to speak. So uh, as we always do, we're going to talk about what players have likely left the club and uh, which players are going to still be on the list but be uh, veterans. Before we get into it, I, uh, I set this goal a while ago of trying to hit 25,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, as I record this, I'm doing it the day before and I, I'm right on the precipice. So I don't know if by the time this video comes out, I've hit that goal or not. Uh, I just want to say, if I have, thank you so much. Uh, it's been wonderful. Every time I set a goal on this channel of reaching a certain milestone by a certain amount of time, you guys really come through. Um, so thank you if I have hit it. If I still haven't hit it, pull your finger out and do better, please. No, just a silly joke, of course. Uh, yeah, this has been a lot of fun this December. I This is the first December I've ever kept making content, and I can intend to keep doing that through January as well. So everyone who's hopped on board, uh, has commented on the videos, subscribed to the channel in general, I just want to say thanks. It's been heaps of fun. All right, without further ado, let's go through the Gold Coast Suns. Now, uh, like I always do to start these videos, I'm going to predict which players are likely to not be on the list in three years' time. In other words, uh, about round one, 2027, that's kind of the target like deadline that I'm, I'm thinking of here. So uh, let's go through some players I, I really don't think will be on the list anymore. Levi Casbolt will be 37. Sam Day will be 34. David Swallow will be 34. Brandon Ellis, 33. Alex Sexton, 33. Rory Atkins at 32, I can't imagine will still be there. And James Cetus is another one who will be 32, and I, I don't think will likely be on the list. So there's another one here that I'm iffy about. Jared Witts. I'm going to exclude him from this analysis just, just to see exactly what this team will look like without their you know, gun ruckman. Jared Witts is an underrated ruck of the competition. He'll be 34 by round one. He turns 35 that year. I think it's probably reasonable to suggest Jared Witts might have sailed off into the sunset. So those are the players that I'm eliminating from this team and trying to come up with the best 22 of what's left. So there's the players that I left in that will be over 30. Sam Collins at 32. I just think... He's such a damn good player, and I really don't think he's the sort of player that relies too much on like athleticism. I think he's just an old-fashioned gun defender. At 32, he's probably still going to be there. And it's also not as though Gold Coast, they're not completely deficient in this area, but like quality key backs, it's not like they have one ready to go to replace him. The, the ones that I think are good and going to be there for a while are already in the team. So that's my logic there. Nick Holman, I uh, haven't retired yet at 31. Took Miller and Lockie Weller, also 31. They're still going to be around. Um, you know, Took, obviously, I still think will be a good midfielder at 31. As for Lockie, I think there's a chance that he gets sidelined, but there's also probably less direct competition for his role as a pure wingman. He plays like a very uh, traditional wing sort of game style, and therefore, uh, I've kept him around. And the other one is Jai Farah, who will be at 30. Again, I'm not saying all of these will be in the best 22 or 24, uh, but those guys, I haven't necessarily retired, if that makes sense. All right, now let's crack into the best 22 slash best 24. I have been doing a six-man bench for these teams just to flesh it out. Like I've said previously, now I'm going to explain every time what exactly you're looking at here. This is the best 24. In green, I've got the players that I'm pretty confident will be there. In yellow, I think there's a little bit more ambiguity as to whether they will be best 22. It can be different varying reasons. It could be, uh, it's not necessarily that I don't rate them, but uh, am I confident that they will have broken into the 22? Or, you know, to what extent do I think they'll beat out their competition for that spot? And sometimes in yellow, I've got them if I'm not sure if they're going to be on the list anymore due to age. So one of them is, is Sam Collins. I think he'll be there. And I think if he's still on the list, he'll still be best 22. So that's what the colors mean. And the numbers are simply their age by round one of 2027 and the rough estimate of how many games they would have played based on you know how entrenched they are in the best 22 right now um, and you know whether they're developing tall, um, et cetera. And I've tried to allow for injury and suspension. So that's my rough estimate of this best 24 or so. So let's go into it. Um, let's look at this back line first, okay? Like I said, Sam Collins, if he's still there, I think he still will be. 
I think he'll still be good enough to be their full back. And Charlie Ballard is an absolute gun. Very confident about that. I'm also a huge fan of Will Powell. Underrated sort of running defender of this comp. The other day, like in my best 22 for 2024, I had him potentially pushing up on a wing. And that's still possible. But, you know, I, I've just chucked him on the halfback flank. I still think he's their best in their best six, uh, regardless, down back. Mac Andrew, I've got in green there again. Still kind of a prospect, you know, like he's not exactly proven that he will be there in three years, but he's shown a bit, uh, having converted from the ruck role. Does he become a ruck in three years' time in the absence of Jared Witts? We'll go into that a little bit later. However, with the lack of clear gun key back options coming through the ranks at this current point in time, he's got some job security, I think, unless things go terribly wrong. Uh, I've kept Butterick. I just think the medium to small defenders, other than Will Powell, was a little bit hard to divide for the Gold Coast Suns. And I'll, I'll put my hand up and say that's partially due to ignorance. I don't know the, the list completely in and out. Butterick, from what I've seen, looks damn good. But he also did that ACL. He hasn't played that much. And that, that's pretty much it. He hasn't played that much. So he's a speculative one, as is Will Graham, who they just took in the second round of, or first round, actually, of the 2023 draft. So again, that one is a little bit hard to split. We'll go through some of the alternatives there. Um, but Butterick as well, a bit more unique as a genuine small defender, 175 centimeters. And the, the mix there is what I like there. So generally speaking, a good back line, uh, considering you know Ballard is at 27, pretty much just in his prime there. Mac Andrew will have developed a lot in three years as well. Let's talk about the midfield. You know, the, the on-ball division of Miller, Rowell, and Anderson. I don't see that changing um, unless someone leaves the club, which I don't think that will happen. Uh, but Rowell Anderson will be in their prime, and it took Miller at 31. Strikes me as the sort of guy who's still going to be damn good at 31. Maybe not like top five in the Brownlow still. Um, but yeah, I, I think Rowell, Miller, and Anderson, that's the prime of that midfield. The wings are a little bit more speculative. Alex Davies looks like a good prospect. Hasn't played that much football. Lockie Weller at 31 is a little bit more vulnerable vulnerable to younger prospects coming and taking his spot. But again, I've still got him there because I think he's the most pure wingman out of that lot. So otherwise, I could have picked a Jake Rogers, who I do think is going to be there. He's a good prospect. Um, I've picked him on the bench, and I've got him in green. But I could have slapped him on a wing, but I, is he a true wingman? Maybe there's some ignorance of mine there, but... Uh, that, that was my logic for mapping out the way I did. So it's a strong midfield, absolutely, when you consider Flanders is still on the bench because I just have Rowland Anderson ahead. You know, Flanders could be the best of the lot, who knows? Uh, but I wouldn't bet on it right now. Uh, I'd say, you know, he, he could be better than Rowell. Anderson's already a damn good footballer. Doesn't matter. That's their midfield mix, and it's going to be very, very good and really maturing five, uh, three years from now, rather. And then I've also got Leonardo Lombard, who... Is, uh, so with the Gold Coast Suns, we've got this benefit of being able to put likely what academy players are going to be there. And I know at least one from 2024. And he's looking like a first-round prospect. Already played in the... Did he play in the VFL grand final, I think, as a 16-year-old? He certainly played at VFL level. So projecting, extrapolating that, he was, he's probably going to be around the mark there. But let's talk about the forward line now. And this one is arguably their biggest strength. Arguably even more than the midfield. So obviously this assumes that you know Ben King's going to be there in three years. I think that's probably more likely than not. Let's talk about him signing an extension soon. Uh, I'm not too sure where that sits, but obviously I'm not going to guess that Ben King has left the club. But Ben King, Jed Walter, and Jack Lacocious could easily be the best forward tall trio in the competition in three years. And when it's got that midfield feeding it, damn, that's hot. And Jed Walter, I think, is a particularly ready-made forward. He reminds me of a better version of Jack Darling. Uh, and I, obviously I'm going to use an Eagles example because they come to mind so easily. But Jack Darling just came into the league ready-made and Jed Walter is similar to that as well. Um, so I think there's a good chance he'll be best 22 by the end of this year or 2024, let alone in three years' time. Bailey Humphrey there is their forward dynamic uh, mid-sized player. Could he play deeper forward? Maybe. Could he play through the midfield? Sure. But if he's versatile, I'm going to chuck him on the flank here. Ainsworth is a good half forward there. Um, again, kind of picks himself. And Roses Jr., there's a little bit of doubt over, but, you know, 19 goals from 19 games as a small forward. Um, he's probably the best player specifically of that type for this list that I could find. Again, could be some ignorance, but I think he's shown enough to suggest he'll probably be there, but he could get overtaken, you know, potentially if Jake Rogers transitions into like a genuine forward role to start his career. I, I don't know. But I think more likely than not, Roses Jr. will be the man. So let's talk about the ruck situation. So without wits, this this Ned Moyle kid, he's only, I say kid, he's like 21. I can say that, I'm over 30. 
He looks pretty good for a guy who's only played two games. I, I feel like he'll be they'll be in relatively safe hands with someone like Ned Boyle, Ned Moyle, and Ethan Reed at twenty one. Too young to be a genuine ruck of the competition by then. However, he is kind of also like an oversized midfielder. And that's why I've got him potentially in the in the team in three years because he could be a handy second ruck uh, in this mix. And obviously with no wits, um, it's not like they have clear other options either. The other one is Mac Andrew. Does he become a ruckman again? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think they need him to be if they've got uh, Moyle and Reed. So their stocks there are pretty good. The other two uh, medium-sized defenders I've got there, I've got Euland um, and Darcy McPherson. Again, there's just a lot of competition for those spots that I'm not really too confident in dividing them. I do like Euland, and I know I've heard other people whose opinion I respect also also talk up Euland. And Darcy McPherson is a pretty established best 22 player right now. But just to name some of the other players that missed out, Sam Closely, he could be a bit of a dark horse. They've just rookie listed him. He's one of the better young prospects out of the VFL. As a running defender, there's Jai Farrow, who I left out. Joel Jeffrey as well. That was that was a hard one to leave out. Again, there's some ignorance at play here, but I think it's also hard to split some of those guys. Caleb Graham, even Ben Long. Sean Lemons, maybe, at a stretch, but more likely the other guys. And Sandy Brock is a, is a key back prospect who hasn't played a game yet, and I just don't know that too much about. Um, so that was the 24 I went with. Other guys, like I said, Nick Holman might still be around. Could he be in the team? Sure. Tom Berry, I feel like that, that one's a little bit more of a long shot. I don't think Fiorini will be in this team in three years' time. And then Will Rollins, who they're just rookie, rookie listed, if I'm not mistaken. Again, like that's a bit of a long shot to be there, but he could still be there. So overall, concluding like what I think of this Gold Coast team, I think, like I said, this is we're going to see the maturation of a team in their prime. Uh, when you look at that midfield mix, that forward line mix, if they can keep those players together, Damien Hardwick has a lot to work with. And I don't think this is groundbreaking, but it's also, if they can get to this point without losing too many more players, then this would easily be the best team on paper that Gold Coast has ever had. And they've also got one of the best coaches of the modern era coaching them. Nothing is guaranteed in sport, particularly AFL, but I do see a team that should be in the top four in three years' time. And uh, it's crazy to think that because they were in the bottom four this year. Uh, But I do think that team has so so much punching power, particularly with that forward line. It just needs a midfield to supply, which they do have, and a solid enough back line with decent talent prospects spread across the entire field. So... Again, what, are we t- what am I telling you that you don't already know? Gold Coats are talented? Sure. But again, obviously the Hardwick factor makes us a little bit more confident than we perhaps have been in previous years. So anyway, guys, that's my take on Gold Coast. Let me know whether you're a fan of them or what it, whether you're not, what you agree with or disagree with. Again, any, any shout outs for players that I missed or potentially underrated, potentially overrated in some cases too. Um, they're an intriguing one to watch and I do find myself you know, rooting for them. You know, They've been the underdog for pretty much day one since they've been in the competition uh, and it would be cool to see them shake things up a little bit in the competition and uh, you know prove a few people wrong but anyway guys that's just my take on them let me know what you thought in the comments subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one